Presentations and community involvement. For 27 years, Richard has served on the JBS Foundation, Board of Directors, and has been on the advisory board since 2012. Prior to launching Master Sales Advisor, Richard spent 16 years at KeyTrack, serving as regional and national sales manager, and later as vice president. He is also a four-time recipient of the Bell and Howell Sales Manager of the Year Award. Now, let's learn more about John Van Shepherd from Richard. Please join me in welcoming Richard Bow. Which one of you are going to be the next John Van Shepherd? Or maybe I should ask, how many of you will become the next John Van Shepherd? Think about that, and we'll come back to it in a little while. Uh, it was such an honor when John asked me to speak about my experience and relationship with John Van Shepherd. I thank Dr. Woodley and the Institute for the opportunity to do so. So I learned of him when I joined the JCs. He was known in that organization as Mr. JC, and he became a heroic figure that I looked up to in that organization. In 1985, when this program started, and I was privileged to attend, it was the first time I got to meet him. And I was further privileged to be selected to chair this event in 1986 in the second year. Uh, John Ben Shepherd and his partner Jim Meacham became advisor mentors at that time. So as I thought about how am I going to encapsulate in these few minutes how much he meant to me and other people, I came up with one word, and I'm going to use it to try to describe him to you. And I want you to think about my questions as I do that. John Ben Shepherd was a statesman. If you look up the picture of statesman in the dictionary, it's his picture. So let's break that down for a minute. He was the epitome of a selfless servant leader. That shouldn't have to be a statement. All leaders should be selfless, but they aren't. John Ben was. Beginning when he was 15 years old in his community, he later became a statewide and national leader. John Ben's leadership was unique. He empowered others. He did not try to retain control of the events he led. He empowered those he brought into the events to have power and grow as leaders as well. He did not enrich himself with his leadership activities. And unfortunately, we have to say that because there are some people in public leadership that do enrich themselves. And he probably had less ego than anyone I've ever been around in my life. He operated under the adage, it doesn't, it, it's amazing what you can get done when you don't care who gets the credit. And John Ben was always the last to try to claim credit. Next, he was a true patriot. He inspired others to cherish freedom. Between the late 40s, when he was National JC President, through his uh, Attorney General service, that was when the Cold War was one step away from being hot. And John Ben spoke nonstop about freedom. And freedom comes in two flavors, political and economic. And my belief is you can't have one without the other. I'm going to quote just one short passage. Uh, there was a booklet put together back in the 50s of John Ben's speech highlights, and the Institute republished it. I encourage you to look at it or Dr. Bob Resch's book, The Americanism of John Ben Shepherd. One excerpt. If our government persists in its apparent effort to destroy free enterprise, then we as young people face a dark future. There is no place in a totalitarian society for these fundamentals. Initiative, ingenuity, and incentive. Let's be pioneers of progress, certainly, but let's not forget what brought us to our present age of greatness. Now the A in statesman stands for action. A lot of conferences like this, people come together, they talk, they go home, and nothing changes. 
John Ben Shepherd believed in bringing people together, educating and inspiring them and sending them home where they could act in their communities with the things they were passionate about. When asked how he would like to be remembered, John Ben Shepherd said, I want to be known that I stirred them up. He stirred people to action. He taught us about citizenship. We are fortunate as a free people to be citizens. In some countries, people are subjects, which basically mean the monarchy is your boss. I hate it when I get mail that says occupant or resident. I don't want to be an occupant or a resident. I want to be a citizen. But as a citizen, it seems that we're too often claiming our rights and too seldom accepting our responsibilities. We have responsibilities as citizens if we want to remain a free people. Next T, John Ben Shepherd was a true Texas legend. He succeeded and found leadership in business, in civic affairs, and public service. He uh, his legacy I get a little emotional every once in a while when I talk about him. His legacy lives through us who were fortunate enough to know him. And I think about him so often. His legacy now will be continued through you and your generation. His legacy will live as long as we ascribe to the ideals that he lived by. Next, he was an example. And whether you know it or not, you're an example right now. You're an example to the people that didn't come this weekend. John Ben led by example with honesty, integrity, and trustworthiness. His life was lived as an example of how to live a life of those values. Next, something that was one of my favorites was his ability to use self-deprecating humor. And those of us that knew John Ben, we're saying that, he's back there. He had such a terrific sense of humor but he was humble enough to make fun of himself. And two of my favorites, one I heard, one I heard secondhand, I want to share with you. When he was speaking, a lot of times he would talk about his service in elected office. And he would say, I left elect elected office for health reasons. The voters got sick and tired of me. Which was funny, but he made fun of himself because he was on a fast track. He'd been in national JC leadership and other areas. He'd been appointed Secretary of State. He was elected twice as Attorney General. He was in line to become the governor of this state. And then there was a scandal in Southeast Texas that was never connected to him, but the citizen voters decided to throw all the elected officials out, and he was one of those. Did he sulk and go slink away and pursue personal pursuits? No. He turned his leadership efforts back into the communities. So he had the humility to do that. Second one, I wasn't there, but tonight at the banquet, I want you to think about this. When you go to a nice banquet, uh, have all the silverware around your plate, there'll be a plate in front of you with a salad, and right above it normally is a nice piece of pie. And so there was a banquet one day, and John Ben was sitting at the head table, and all of a sudden, everybody starts eating their salads, and John Ben reaches up and pulls the pie down, puts it in front of him, puts the salad up, and he starts eating on the pie. And somebody said, John Ben, why are you eating the pie first? He said, well, I promised my wife I would not have dessert after my meal. So, <laughs> what a good thought. Next. He was a man who loved his family. He was married to Mamie Shepherd over 50 years. She was a terrific supporter of him and his efforts. Uh, unsung sometimes, but he would not have succeeded as much without her. They had four children. John, uh, the two daughters, and uh, 
Albert. Albert. Thank, Thank you, Charles. Charles. <laughs> but I was thinking of another piece. Family of four. Uh, I never appreciated. They lost John in 1970. John Ben Shepherd, Jr. I never appreciated what he had to overcome to continue his leadership until I lost my son. But now I understand what he overcame to continue being a force for Texas. Next, the A, he was an advisor and mentor. Two examples in my life. When I was selected as chairman in 1986, there was a year-long planning process. We had a large statewide committee. Uh, we worked diligently to put on the program. John Ben Shepherd and his partner, Jim Meacham, were great advisors and mentors to me and the committee. And like I mentioned, he did not come in and tell us what to do. He did not come in and take over. I'm sure there were times we frustrated him and not doing things as well as he might have done, but he never said a negative word. And then after that, two years later in 1988, when I published my first book, The Volunteer Handbook, uh, John Ben Shepherd honored me and wrote the foreword for that book. And he supported me and encouraged me. And what was interesting was, I did not know it till somebody else brought it up to me. He had authored a book about volunteer leadership years before, but he had never said a word to me about that. He had never said anything about anything I wrote other than positive comments. Uh, when he might have said, hey, why don't you look at what I did and go from there. So it was a great experience of how he treated people. And as you'll look, you'll see everyone that knew him would run through a wall for him. And that brings me to my last letter, the letter N. He was a never-ending friend. He was an encourager. And encouragement to me is one of the greatest gifts that we can give anyone. He encouraged people to become more than they thought they could be. And when he spoke, he'd always talk about he was friend-made. He would say, I hope being your friend means half as much to you as you being my friend means to me. He was a statesman. Now it's time for you. I want you to stand when I say these characteristics if you want to be this type of leader. Do you want to be a selfless servant leader? Okay. Do you want to be a true patriot? Do you want to be a person of action? Do you want to be a contributor to Texas? Do you want to lead by example? Do you want to be a person that loves your family? Do you want to be an advisor mentor? Do you want to be a never-ending friend? If we all do those things, we will, may not become John Ben Shepherd, but we will all be better than we might be today, which is what we want to do. Now, we heard it last night, but I want to say this by itself because I want it to stand out to you. Because citizenship must be earned and paid for generation by generation. Freedom is the same thing. And John Ben would close his speeches. To be born free is an accident. To live free is a responsibility. But to die free is an obligation. We have that responsibility and obligation now. We need to execute it. May God bless you. May God bless the John Ben Shepherd Institute. May God bless Texas. Thank you.